about um, the situations in, in this country. Yesterday I saw a national security strategy launch mm -hmm. and for me I think it's a step in the right direction. It's kept for a few questions that pertain which we'll discuss later in the uh, newspaper review, review segment. Okay. Yeah, so, but that, that's uh, for me it's, it's a good thing mm. to come out along. Mm. Um, history will have it that since uh, for all our 64 years of existence we've never had a thing of that nature. So it's a good strategy mm. um, or a good document if you will but as to whether or not it scratches us where we itch is the other conversation right, right, and right. questions about the, the base statistics, for example, that I used, all of those conversations mm, will come mm, up. So mm. we'll have that conversation. Mm. Yeah. But all right. What did cool. you bring? Um, <laughs> I, I didn't bring much, but I have received a lot. I've seen a lot. Okay. Um, I've seen Sir John going on, mm. people teaming at the funeral, all protocols getting broken. And so the question is, the lawmakers mm -hmm. who told us to wear our masks everywhere yeah, yeah, yeah. and to practice social distancing, mm -hmm. to have only 25 people at funerals and parties, mm -hmm. um, church services not going beyond two hours maximum, right. and uh, adhering to 25% capacity mm -hmm. at every social gathering, yeah. um, I'm, I'm wondering how different it was for them. Were they Ghanaians, the people at the funeral? Well, they were, or all, they were from somewhere else? They were all Ghanaians. I, and I think that they, and I keep talking about candor and honesty. Right. Um, when we started this whole COVID-19 fight, and this has been my argument all along, mm. that the law is not being applied evenly. Mm. And I've said this over and over again. People sometimes will attack you and say contrary things. They think you're trying to make the government unpopular. You have an agenda against government. But check. Right from uh, 2019, dovetailing to 2020, mm. until we passed the Imposition of Restrictions Act and moving on, mm -hmm. we have seen places owned by politicians that mm. have been opened. <laughs> We're talking about beach resorts and right, all of that. We've right, seen them. Right. We've, we have seen so many of them. We have seen no less the person than the president, vice president, having dinner, parties. parties. We have seen that. Yeah. We have seen them organizing funerals where more than 25 people. We have seen them. A lot. We have seen how uh, my good brother Kwanzaa died. Mm. We saw the numbers at the mm. funeral. Mm. We've seen it. We've mm. seen. We've mm. seen all of it. We've seen a king crowned during uh, what do you call it? COVID nineteen right. in right. the president's yeah. back backyard yeah. in, in a Kapim area. We've seen it. We've seen so many of those ones. So me, what happened at Sejong's funeral? Mm. What happened at Accra Sports Stadium? It's not surprising to me. Mm -mm. It's not surprising to me because. I think we have normalized what is not right. Mm, mm. And if people speak up against what is not mm, right, mm. they are rather pointed out to be the persons who are against the nation or against people who are state actors. Whatever happened there is a shame. If I touch wood, lose a relative who died from COVID, I'm told that I can't even have access to the body. <sighs> Talk less of laying the body in, in state. state. Or even keeping the body in the mug for this for that, long. Because then for the, this you will have the assemblies come and threaten that it, we, if you don't come, we are going to bury the bodies. All of those ones. We've heard them before. And then, in fact, where your body is, is wrapped in a certain way, you just get to the... The uh, what family do you, the, are standing inches and yards exactly. away from you. So now, how... How is it that, and we have just also seen, uh, not so long ago, the director of research, former director of research at the presidency, mm -hmm. you know, he died also re remote of COVID. COVID. And what happened? Yeah. We've seen yeah. Dr. Mwaku Tufo. Mm -hmm. They were all kept be yeah. be beyond yeah. the numbers, yeah. that the number of days that yeah. were told that people will not be kept. So Yet the, the ordinary man didn't have you, you can't that have opportunity. It. So yes. the question I'm asking is, how evenly are we applying the law? The same law that the president passed. The same law that the president used his green pen to sign. Hmm. How evenly are we applying the law? So, can you look at this crowd that's gathered now? Look at what happened at the Accra Sports Stadium. Look at what happened at the Kriapim King's Palace. Look at all the other ones, all the other funerals and parties and other things that people have done. And tell the people of Ghana that they cannot celebrate their homo. Nah. It's you impossible. cannot say it. You can't have the moral temerity a, no, to you say cannot. it. You cannot. Unless you heavily apologize and deal with the people who put together these numbers. You have to deal you with them. To. 
And I, I agree to. with Occupy Ghana and the Ghana Medical Association. Yes. Deal with the people who did this because I believe crime does not expire. And just a few weeks ago, I mean, we can even say days when this whole Fix the Country campaign started. You remember how they did everything they could to stop protesters from embarking right, on that right. um, um, demonstration, Fix the Country demonstration. All sorts of law jargons were quoted to back the arguments that no, um, you cannot do it. And because of COVID-19 protocols, mm -hmm. it will be a quick spreader or a fast spreader of the virus and all that. All sorts of reasons were given, mm. and we couldn't even embark, or let me say the nation couldn't even embark on this fix the country um, demonstration. Um, demonstration. Then days after, we see this. I, I, that's why I asked that uh, these people at the funeral, were they Ghanaians? Are they still here? Are they, did they come from this country? Because it doesn't look to me that these people are Ghanaians, because if they are Ghanaians, just look at your screens right now, what's happening at the stadium and what happened at St. John's funeral. I mean, are we evenly, like Johnny said, are we evenly distributing the rightful thing to be done in this country? Are we all doing the right thing? Or when it comes to doing the right thing, some people can do it, and when other people do it, it is okay and, and, and all that. This is is appalling and everybody who was at this funeral i don't know if they're even going to do contact tracing and all that but something must be done this has been um said to be a very fast spreader of the virus as we speak i don't know if ghana is going to go through a third spike of um, um covid 19 infections but I, 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 I pray not and I hope not because if what happened in India is supposed to be happening here in Ghana, I'm not sure what our situation will be. But um, lawmakers, good morning to all of you this morning. I'm sure you're watching. I'm sure you've seen all um, these videos. It's not just on TV3. It's across all news platforms mm. in this country. And this is very, very shameful. In the fight against COVID-19 in this day and age, 2021, you cannot have this happening. And then later on, tell people that you can't have parties where you're more than 25 people and all that and all that. Good morning, colleagues. Bella. Oh, Bella. Yeah. Welcome. How are you doing? I'm yeah. good. How are you? Good. Yeah, I'm good. Well. I just want to bring this in. So on the bring 21st it. of January, 2021, mm -hmm. we were given updates as to how many people had been arrested mm -hmm. yeah. for not wearing nose, nose masks. Mask. And the headline said... 200 people arrested by the police for not wearing nose masks in public. Hmm. And it was by the Greater Accra Regional Police Command. They mounted a special operation um, and they arrested about 97 people. And then there was another number. And I remember in Tema as well, hmm. there were 105 persons who were arrested. This was also on the first... Uh, the 20th of January, mm. 105 persons arrested for not wearing nose masks. And I remember that there were videos of them mm. lined up at the police station yeah. and mm. were complaining mm. that the police stations are already very small. Mm. How do you line 105 exactly. or 200 people yeah. in that very small space with people not wearing masks? Mm. Is that not going to also lead to another spread of COVID-19 yeah. if indeed yeah. these people have yeah. it? And we raised concerns about that. We were told that, well, if you're in public, I remember there was even a time they came out and said that even if you're in your car, alone, alone you should, you wear, should wear it. Not wearing I was mask. actually stopped <laughs> by you the police. Stopped. I was stopped. I think exactly. two weeks ago, I was stopped by the police when all three of us were sitting in the car after mm -hmm. work and they stopped and they said, you're not wearing a mask. Exactly. Said, really? So we raised but even concerns the policeman about who it. stopped me wasn't wearing a mask. We raised concerns well, about it. And, you know, they kept giving explanations as mm -hmm. to why people were being arrested and stuff. And I'll go back again to what Richard said. Mm -hmm. That's the reason why they decided to, um, you know, deal with the church, right. Christ Embassy, right. was because it was in an enclosed space. And so that was going to lead to oh. the virus spreading even more. He explained that. I mean, he was comparing that to the open space where the funeral took place. And yesterday I saw a video where they were taking, you know, the house... Forgive me, yeah. family, but they then built, the, the yeah. tomb they built for yeah. him. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you could see that people had lined up at the gate. And, and it was enter. even difficult yeah. Yeah. to pull the, the coffin in. yeah. into yeah. that space. Yeah. Imagine all those people. If anybody has COVID-19, what would it mean? I'm hearing that there's an MP who has tested positive for COVID-19. Mm. Mm. And so there? there's a likelihood. Well, I don't know if he was there, right. but we don't know how long he may have had it. They said mm. he was sick for a while, and mm. so he tested. And his family members have tested, and they're all positive. This is just news coming in this morning. Right. Right. So only God knows who he may have interacted or who she may have interacted with before the funeral. What if she passed it on to someone who yeah. attended the funeral, yeah. and that person was among this crowd? What happens? Just to put on record that all three of us have had our double doses yeah. of uh, the vaccines. Yeah. So, <laughs> but we wear the mask regardless. Just we this do. morning, we wanted we to. The, the fact it remains that 
we are not applying the laws evenly. We are not being honest. Mm -hmm. We are not being honest. There's no honesty in this whole fight. And that's the same thing we are doing with the Galamse fight. Later tonight at 9.30 p.m., we'll show you something that Alfredo Kansi had done with, uh, so in the Atuba Forest. Atuba Forest. Yeah. And yeah. the people who are mining, the people who were in the pit, told him that they were sent there by big men. Mm. They, were not, they were not doing it on their own. Because, I mean, how, can they afford a chamfan? Can they afford an excavator? Can they even hire it for every day for, what, 7,000 7, cities yeah. a day? Yeah. Can they afford that? Yeah. They can obviously not afford it. And they say the big men are there. And we go about arresting the small, small men. Because now, if we go there into the bush, we see them just like that. Mm -hmm. We pick all of them up, mm -hmm. line them up, make a public show of them, and say, oh, we seize one we excavator, see. one chamfer, one people. this one. But the no. people who yeah. own the excavators, yeah. and I insist, every excavator has a chassis number. Every excavator has a chassis number. The chassis number can connect you, for those of you who own cars, can connect you to who owns the car, when the car was manufactured, when it was imported into the country, when it was bought. Every chamfan, I'm sure, has something that can identify it. If you go, arrest them, burn it, make public show and make speeches, you have done next to nothing. When the people, these guys are arrested and put behind bars. The big men who are sponsoring them can also go and hire a new set of young people, hungry, desperate, looking for bread and butter, and give them more resources to go to other parts of Ghana and start digging again. So you see, we are just throwing money at the problem. We are not solving the problem as we should. We should tackle the problem from the root. I tell you what, if we find two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten big men make a public show of them and jail them, put them in cuffs and take them to Insawam, who do live coverage of it and put them in the jails, it will stop. Because what we are doing right now, and which is why I am paying sometimes when I'm talking about this, because we just are catching the small fishes. The big fishes who are involved in Galamsey mm -hmm. are walking free. And guess what? Where Alfred recorded this? In the Atiwa Forest. In the Atiwa Forest, though, off. Mm. Atiwa Forest of all places where the Ghana Army said they took more than 700 excavators out in one day. Atiwa Forest. Same place. Three rivers go through Atiwa Forest. Atiwa Forest, mm -hmm. though. Our Atiwa Forest. We are planning to plant trees in the next two, three days. What will be the essence of the trees we plant? If those trees already standing are not properly are protected. Not. Exactly. What will be the essence? Because it takes forever for a tree to grow, to start producing the oxygen that we need and to be taking in the carbon dioxide that we exhale. So if the trees that are standing, we know that uh, the, when the last tree dies, the last man dies. What are we doing? What are we doing? I mean, the, fact that, the fact that we're even finding people still in the forest, when the lands minister mm -hmm. has issued a statement banning that any all mining has stopped. Exactly, yeah. of mining in the forest reserves, especially even reconnaissance and all of that. And we're still finding people there. It just tells you that we're very good at putting our policies. We're very good at talking. Like but in actual fact, do we have the people to ensure? Because there was also a concern that how long can you keep the military men there. in these reserves yeah. and along the water bodies? Right. Because after a while, they'll move to another area mm -hmm. and already the, the defense minister was saying that we know there are people who have started mining at night mm. <laughs> so we are coming for you and so they are going to find ways to circumvent the law every time but like this because was they not know at when night. this no, thing what I'm saying shot is, by alfred was in if, the day even yeah. if people have found ways to even mine at night mm. do we have the military men yeah. to stay to there for that exactly, long yeah. because they especially yeah. because we know that if they stay longer as well they right. might be compromised yes. but do we have the men to mm. ensure that mm. for the next one year mm. we're going to keep our eyes um, you know, on the ground in the forest to prevent people from entering. Otherwise, but, 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 but did they even have to mention that they know people mine at night and that they are coming for them? <laughs> Do what's they are warning them. Bring us results. No, this means no warning. This means no warning. Then I will come out. Then go and chill more and let us see. Say, watch him for four. What did he say? Did he from 10 p.m. or 8 p.m. to 4 a.m.? Right. Then I will come out. Exactly. Exactly. So, so here's the thing. I know for a fact that our military men are properly trained to surmount any kind of challenge. Mm. Right. I am aware of yeah. that. Yeah. I know that our military men put them in the bush in the dark, leave them there, they will find their they've way been back home. For yeah. it. They've yeah. been trained for it. Yeah. They've, been, they've, been, they've been regimented for it. I know that our SWAT team, for example, our striking for whatever it is, they've been trained for those... Of course, apart from those who were pushed into it, mm -hmm. 
But those who went through really the went training, through, yeah. the rigorous training, right. they can stand. So if you say people are mining from 9 or 10 <laughs> to 4, they can, they can meet them fire for fire. But that's why he said we are coming for you. Yeah. But you don't need to tell them. <laughs> they, can, they can fire for but fire. Like, it needed no announcement <laughs> at all. It needed no, no, it's just one ahead no, of time. But it oh, no, just to be fair, Charlie, if you what, know you are when sinning, you, when you're, stop when sinning. When you're growing up, when your mother wanted to catch you for a little crime <laughs> in the house, did she, would she tell you? She, she would just uh, pounce and chance on you so, for you so to so for me, so just another so that if his friends and family are there, they can run away before. So for me, the defense minister also mentioned something. He said that no military officer will ru ruin his career or mm -hmm. sacrifice his career sacrifice, just yeah. to conceal or hide gold. Yeah. I believe in their integrity. But I'm saying that we started this fight in 2017. And then we had to bridge it and start it all over again in 2021. Yeah. It's the Minister for Defense who has been the Minister for Defense all this while, who has been part of the SWAL 10-member mem interministerial committee, telling us or want, wants us to believe that since 2017 up until date, they have not found an iota of, found an iota gold. of gold, it's diamond, amazing. bauxite in, in, the, in the bush. It's amazing. Because the point is that these Galamse sites, and as Alfred will reveal to you later today, their money, they take stash of cash to the bush. Bella finishes mining, they pay Bella. Take, take your 120. Gold. And then they take finish the gold. mining, take your 200. They give you and go. So when you go and arrest them, where is the stack, stash of cash? Um, yeah. Where are the gold diamond that were picked from there? I mean, I'm talking, so you may not have found some recently. I'm talking about what was found in 2017. Maybe you didn't find it. Maybe we bent the gold too. But these are questions that we yeah. should be asking. Until recently, we were only told about excavators. But from 2017 to 2020, where are the generators? Yeah, mm -hmm. Where are the chanfans? Mm -hmm. Where are the well, lamps? Where are the, oh, where well, are the guns? Well, the minister, where is the money? Well, the minister says it's not possible for 800 um, um, uh, 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 soldiers to be able to conceal the truth. So they haven't found anything anywhere. Because out of the 800, mm. if they have found something somewhere, mm. it is possible that one or two will oh, no. See, so, in our local so he palace. Say, so so he according say, to him, it's not possible so, that all 800 so of them see, have been compromised. So the minister is saying the renewed fight operation halt. Right. I am asking that. Mm. Thankfully, he has been defense minister since 2017. Since yeah, Honorable Kojo Pongkuma has been information, information minister, minister since 2017. Honorable Ambrose Derry has been interior minister from 2017. Right. I'm saying that we had an interministerial committee that started the fight in 2017. Between 2017 and 2020, when we decided that let's dissolve the committee and let's start the fight all, all over, over again, again with Operation Halt, mm. what has been the result in terms of when we went to A, B, C, D, mm. these are the excavators we seized. And with the excavators, we found X amount of gold. We found X amount of cash. We found X amount of generator. They didn't find any gold. Yes, we haven't found any gold. They didn't find any cash too? No, nothing. They no find money. Any ammunition Only excavators mm. without the motorboards. Yeah, yeah that's what we found. Anyway. And especially because the Miners Association, uh, the Small Scale Miners Association mm. had said that they were all in that meeting mm -hmm. to, you know, discuss what exactly it is they are going to do on the ground. Mm. Only for them to find out later <laughs> that what they discussed not everything was implemented and in right. fact new things were introduced mm. on the ground mm. of which they were not not aware of mm. and that is why they are complaining that they are arresting the wrong people they are arresting the people who are operating legally and actually leaving the big fishes yeah, yeah. and so that's why they're upset and they're saying that we're not going to agree with this formula of yours you, you told us what you're going to do and you're doing something totally different anyway i don't know what, what so there's uh, a lady nurse I, I want to, on the back of, and so this is on the back of the Minister for Roads, um, uh, if you like, outburst, that mm, yeah, if you are I asking for the roads to be constructed, mm -hmm. you are too late, and that you don't know you what time up. it is, you should hurry, say hurry, hurry and, <laughs> and catch, catch up, hurry, yeah. hurry and Indeed, catch, catch up. up. This catch is uh, <laughs> Blessed uh, Angel, but yeah. like, this is what, read what's there. She said that she was on her way to deliver an emergency health service, mission accomplished, but because the road was fixed, I fixed myself too, and you'd be shocked okay. at the photo of how she fixed herself. This is what happened to her, um, I'm sure she tripped. Yeah. I'm sure she tripped. It's uh, on a motorbike and I saw, actually. I saw, I saw. I saw go this up, picture and up. I was like, heart's breaking. Um, okay, I'm not sure if there's more up there. Okay, no, good. It's not this one. Uh, somebody oh, I think it. we lost it, okay. yeah. So this is it. She fixed herself uh, and uh, the situation fixed there as well. Somebody sent it right now. Mm. 
Mm. I forgot to mail. Maybe we'll leave anyway, it. Anyway, yeah. yeah. We'll just leave I'm it. Sure but we'll it later. but this right. is what happened to yeah. her. And then when, when she was sacrificing. They tell us to fix ourselves. And so the road has been fixed. So she too, she's fixed herself. What, what she has yeah. there is an ice pack. So I, I get a sense I'm that sure she's it's... a community health yeah. nurse yeah. Yeah. Who, who was going out to deliver some... Uh, Medicine what do you call it? Yes. Or something. Or something yeah. Of sort. yeah. She yeah. was on a motorbike, and this is a road. And if you go into most of our communities, you find some of these dirty patches that people use as roads. It rains sometimes, the communities are cut, are cut off from each other. Right. And I, I always say that when you elect people into, into office, mm -hmm. be they NDC or MPP, as we have come to find since 1992, yeah. and you pay taxes for the state. Public officials must have the humility to answer the questions of the people they actually begged to vote for them. When you ask questions and the questions are turned around to suggest as if you are anti-government, mm -hmm. you don't like the government, mm -hmm. I don't, sometimes I don't get I it. Don't get it yeah. Because I am not asking for anything extra. I am asking you to fulfill what you stood on the campaign platform and promised that you were going and to told do. me that yeah. you were going to do. Yeah. Thankfully, a minister for roads has been the same minister for roads since 2017. And I like President Kufado for one thing. He has maintained most of the people right. he At put the in the portfolio. Yeah, right. So it's yeah. very easy to do a certain kind of tracking of what the president said to them in January 2017 while he was appointing them at the Jubilee House right. Institute. Said, Cookie, come and stand here. Right. Cookie is a graduate of SSS school. Cookie has had uh, so, uh, so experience, worked here, blah, blah, blah. And we have seen that the problem with the road sector is this. We are bringing Cookie in to come and fix this. So when we measure what the president, maybe one of these days we should, play what the president said in it's January yeah. 2017 yeah. Yeah. and match them to what the ministers have been doing since they've been in office with all the loans, the grants, and everything that we have borrowed we need to be asking them the questions and we need to stop them from playing victims because your job as a minister, your job as a director, your job as a DCE, MCE is not to play victim. Your job is to solve the problems of the victims. Your job is not to play victim. Your job is to fix the problems that you came to find. And if you can't fix the problems, let honesty prevail. Let's get some more people in to support and help you. Rather than trying to play victim and try to marshal people to come at people who ask you questions. In any case, would you have been a minister if there's no Ghana? Would you have been a minister if people don't pay taxes? Would you have been a minister if the president didn't think that you were competent enough to deliver the job? So why are you in there? You are now complaining. And you find them complaining everywhere. Hmm. Everywhere. There are, some people actually walk up to you and say, you are giving us too much trouble. I said, what is the trouble I'm giving you? <laughs> you have told me that you give me SkyTrain. You have told me that you give me electronic buses. What, what happened to that? You have told me that you will put CCTV cameras in every the police station COVID, since, COVID since uh, what do you call, uh, Chief Inspector Ashley Levy died. You have told me that you will tie every road. You have told me that my street lights will be working. If I am reminding you that you said that, so fix it for me, you say I'm yeah, making you I unpopular. Agree. How am I making you unpopular? Have I stopped paying my taxes? Have I stopped? Jesus Christ. All right. On that Jesus Christ, see note. Hallelujah, somebody. <laughs> We'll take a break. We'll be right back with the newspaper review. This is still TV3 New Day. We're back on air. Thank you very much indeed for joining us. Many thanks to Sonar Fashions in Tamale for my beautiful outfit this morning. I'll share the number with you so you get to connect with Sonar. Happy birthday to Efua, Efua Asamoa. It's your birthday today. You're an nurse at Asamankesi. And we wish you long life and prosperity from all of us here. We love you and we celebrate you. Okay, so again today as well, uh, a de better dedication to Malcolm Carl Ampedu. Your one today is from your father and mother, uh, Sel Ampedu. They wish you a happy birthday as well. If it's your birthday, happy birthday to you. The Daily Graphic this morning says, We met conditions for unitization. Springfield is talking. What about E and I? Well, we'll get some more detail later. Massive support greets 2021 census citizens' profess uh, readiness. Cannabis production applications flood narcotics commission. And the national security strategy launched focuses on constitutional democracy, tolerance, and the rule of law. And we are three days away from the National Tree Planting Day. Also, on the back page, illegal fishing activities. Stakeholders want government action. And there you have it, someplace in the central region there. The Real Estate Times Africa says zero schools under trees. 
Construction begins as Valco Trust Fund cuts sword. Also, Northing Region says GS headquarters in a sorry state. The ceilings are coming off, and that's where they are supposed to be administering education for all the region. Sad sight indeed. Establish estate offices, Valco Trust uh, to the GS, and uh, also we will get what's on the front page. Don't use a commercial property loan like an overdraft. That's an advice for those who have gone to pick loans from the banks. The BNFT, huge import still burdening Tamayo Refinery's debt portfolio. Government working to revive companies' fortunes and debt reaches more than 340 million US dollars. Businesses must may need more time and support to recover from COVID-19. It reminds me of the NBSSI loans. Uh, I still have friends who had gotten messages that they'll get something in January 2021, where in June, nothing yet. Under uh, resource sec impedes capital markets development. The Ghanaian Times. Government plans to deal with terrorism, violent extremism, as president launches the national security strategy and a brand new office step. And also remain focused as government takes steps to revive economy in the midst of COVID-19. Finance minister urges young people. And GMA condemns flagrant disregard for COVID-19 safety protocols. And they've been very, very livid about what happened at St. John's funeral and what happened at their cross sports stadium as well. They find that newspaper. Government's domestic tourism drive will create one million jobs, Dr. Wow. Oforiata urges you to take advantage of government initiative and nearly 16,000 agribusinesses folded up between May 2020 and 2021. Statistical service, the Professor Nim uh, is on that page. And this will come on the back of the agri census that we did from 2017 to 2018 that proved that most of our farm holders are older people. And, well, a question of food security comes up. Ghana adopts a new security strategy. A stress to nation evolve faster with a greater intensity. Uh, President Kufadu. GMA disappointed over disregard for safety protocols at St. John's funeral. And firstly, this supports tree planting to restore lost forests. Daily Guide. Despite economic challenges, opportunities abound. And Nana unveils national security strategy. Oponi claims against Judge Erus, according to Attorney General Don, uh, uh, Godfrey Dami there. Sami Jemfi is the National Communications Officer of the NDC. He joins us in studio on the ticket of his party. And also, Mr. Richard Nyama will join us in studio. He's a special aide to the MPP's party chairman, Mr. Freddie Blaze, also a member of the National Communications team. Sam, welcome. Good morning. How are you doing? Oh, we can't complain. Okay. Things are tough, but once there is life, there is hope. So... Things are uh, tough. You're wearing a nice suit and a nice shirt. Oh, come on. When I talk about things being tough, mm. I'm talking about the price of fuel, which has gone up significantly mm. as a result of the introduction of new draconian taxes mm. on fuel and other commodities by the insensitive Akufuado the government. And I'm talking mm. about the increment in transport fares, mm -hmm. which has imposed on toward or which has imposed untold hardships on the vast majority of Ghanaians. Those who have to use Trotro mm. or the taxi or Uber are now being made to pay more when they have not seen any commensurate increments in their incomes. Mm. I'm talking about businesses that are suffocating as a result of the imposition of these new draconian taxes on them as a result of the worsening exchange rate, mm. which is eroding their profit margins and capital, and so on. That is the sturdy state of our country today. People are really mm. suffering mm. because government's policies, which are supposed to provide relief, mm. are rather imposing more and more hardships on the already suffering Masses. And that's and so, why you think that things are not right. Uh, things are not. If, 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 if you were buying a gallon of petrol at a price of 16 Ghana cities per mm -hmm. gallon in 2016, and today you are buying the same gallon at 27 cities, 22 pesos, you will know that things are very tough. Okay, so let's. We're uh, not living in normal times at all. Let's take a look at this uh, piece, uh, an excerpt of what we will show you later at 9 30 p.m. Alfred Okansi, my colleague, has been digging in the Atiwa forest. He found some. Uh, miners in there. Remember that the minister has said that all forms of mining 
uh, around th that enclave particularly would not be happening. Well, take a look at this and we'll return to have a conversation whether the national tree planting exercise uh, that will come up in the next three days is really going to achieve the purpose for which it was set out, especially knowing that people are still cutting down trees and, and mining. Take a look. This is the chamfan, which crushes the stones. We are where we don't have to pollute the water bodies with our chemicals. In the end, one thing remains clear, that the fight against illegal mining is far from over. If you take Atiwa, we have about you know, 757 different plants, not, not plants, but trees, vascular plants. Yeah, so the place is so rich when it comes to tree species. And um, some of these um, species are black species. What I mean is that they are endangered worldwide. They are finishing. They are finishing. Richie Nyama joins us. It's not finished yet. Richard, good morning. How are you doing? Good morning, my brother. Everything cool? Sami yeah. says uh, times are hard. Our times are hard for you too. Uh, let me say good morning to my brother Sami and uh, yourself and your viewers. Mm -hmm. uh, it's been quite a while. Um, obviously, times are not the easiest. Mm -hmm. uh, Ghanaians are aware of where we are coming from and uh, appreciate that fact. Even the president mm -hmm. uh, foresaw this in 2020 when he announced to the world that what we know mm -hmm. is how to bring an economy back. Right. But what we can't or don't know is how to bring people back. Lives back. Now, as a then, if uh, he was uh, a pastor uh, or a prophet, they would be telling he was speaking into the future. Because he saw that the economy was going to be badly affected. Mm -hmm. But as the leader of this country, it is something that he can accept mm -hmm. because that can be addressed later on. But what he cannot accept and which is out of control, of his control, because it's only the divine one, the God, uh, God that mm -hmm. can bring humans alive or back to life. But he has control over so, the taxes. Yes. Oh, so he was, he was saying that after going through all that we went through in, under COVID, mm -hmm. We should come back and government should what use what to bring us out of COVID. The people are saying they are being pressed. They are being pressed. Mm. Everywhere is being pressed. My brother is talking about increasing fuel. Mm. Yes. The United States of America, uh, virtually the number one producer of finished uh, oil, uh, mm. oil or products. gas, petroleum products. A, a, a gallon is selling for, uh, 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 what do you call it? Uh, Four fifty, okay. Dollars, you mean? Convert it yeah. and see what the difference is. If you are importing it from America. You don't do it here. Toy is down. So how do you expect that you buy the thing from abroad? Their prices are increasing by dollar to dollar and fifty because of COVID, and we are supposed to still have it for free. Uh, you're talking about increasing what? The exchange rate. Mm. If you look at the figures, in the last six months, it's not me who is saying it. The, those dealing in that sector are saying that Ghana has held, the city has held its own against all the major currencies. But the, but the, but the Bank of Ghana been, governor is telling the big companies to be measured in how much they spend uh, and repatriate to their country. That is the point. Because if you are repatriating all of it, then we may, in the end, uh, erode the gains that we've uh, got right now. So get your top so five companies locally up there so they can keep the money here. 
Yes, but those are things that you don't do overnight. Mm. We haven't done that since independence. You don't expect Akufuado to come and address all of Ghana's problems in a day. Okay. And so for that to happen, mm. Mm. Uh, it will take time. We've all recognized that we are in a situation where we've just come from a hellhole. Mm. It's like uh, under uh, Noah, being in the ship for 40 years, mm. When you come out and you see the world, the bare land, everything, it confuses you. It takes time for you to, to put things together. So Ghana okay. should bear with us. Okay. Uh, Johnny, Sam, yeah. if I can just... I, I thought we were just, moving just on. Just two points. Because what we are discussing... Uh, well, I just sure. greeted you both. Is, what, you is <laughs> what the people of this country are interested you in. These are bread to his greetings. and butter <laughs> issues that affect right. the lives of our people. Mm. I want to put on record that contrary to what Richard would have us believe, mm. the reason why the prices of fuel have gone up mm. is not because of the fact that the international market price has gone up. It is not because the price of fuel for has gone up in the United States of America. The reason is because his government, the insensitive Akufuado government, has imposed about three nuisance taxes mm -hmm. on the prices of fuel. You have introduced a 10 pesos boiler tax, what is called the sanitation and pollution tax, mm -hmm. on every liter of diesel and fuel. Okay. That's a fact. You've introduced a 20 pesos increment in ESLA mm -hmm. on every liter of diesel and petrol. That is a fact. Apart from that, you have um, introduced a 1% COVID levy mm -hmm. on the VAT flat rate which is applied on supplies of retailers and wholesalers, another 1% COVID levy mm. on the NHI, uh, NHIL, mm. which is also applied on the prices of goods and services and all that. These, these, are, these taxes mm. are the reason why prices of fuel have gone up okay. with, so it's not, it's not what explaining. with its concomitant effects on okay. general prices of goods and services. Okay. Secondly, mm. This attempt by our friends in the MPP to always blame mm. the economic mess they have created on COVID is neither here nor there. And they should spare us that deception. COVID, COVID is real. No, COVID is real. Mm. But the facts show that even before COVID, the economy was deteriorating. What COVID only did was to expose and worsen an already bad economy. Before COVID, in 2019, mm. huh, the fiscal deficit had increased from 6.3% in 2016 to 7.5%. Mm. Mm. The public debt had moved from 56%, that's debt to GDP, to 64.5%. Before COVID, the manufacturing sector, which is very critical mm. to the development of an emerging economy like ours, had shrunk, declined, from 7.9% in mm. 2016 to 6.5% in okay. 2019 before COVID. Thank you. I, and I can give you so many I, I know. economic matrices I know. for you to uh, I, I mean, know, but appreciate this, this the fact supposed that to be a response to his greeting. So, so what I'm telling him is okay. that we are going through hardships mm. as a direct, the hardships we are going through currently, let me put it that way, mm. is a direct product of the bad policies and the insensitive leadership of President Tekufuado okay. and Dr. Baumia and nothing more. Okay. And that is what Richard should, you know, accept and stop blaming the imposition of taxes like boiler tax on COVID. What has COVID got to do with boiler okay. tax? Okay, thank you very much. Or, Grateful. Or, 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 or what? Um, uh, 20 pesos increment in ESLA. A tax mm. you berated the Mahama administration for introducing, mm. described it as a nuisance tax, mm. and promised to abolish it when elected. Since you were elected, not only have you failed to abolish it as you promised, you've collateralized it for a seven to ten year bond. Okay. Apart from that, apart from that, Sammy, learn for me. Uh, no, yes. <laughs> apart from collateralizing the Exla, mm. you have increased it by twenty two percent during, that, and that was during your first term alone. You've uh, you've increased that Exla that you promised to abolish because mm. you claim it was a nuisance tax by twenty two percent, and today you've increased it again, and you are blaming it on COVID. What has COVID got to do with the twenty percent? Okay, thank Exla? you, uh, Richard. You yeah, respond yeah. to the response to your greeting. <laughs> He first responded to my greeting. Your greeting, okay, yeah. Uh -huh, so. so you are okay. responding to so, each other. So this is a, a greeting <laughs> response. It's a season of responses. Mm. That's, that's fine. 
Uh, first and foremost, mm. is it true and is it a fact that prices of fuel, mm. gas, and oil and gas uh, in and around the world has increased? No. Yes, it mm. is. And have cited the United States of America as a good example. Mm. Okay. I happen to be in the transport industry over there, and I am aware of how it affects my business back mm, down there. Mm. I'm saying that on average, there is an increase of between $1.2 to $1.5 a gallon mm. in the United States of America. We don't produce gas here. We import it. Mm. OK? Now, you are talking about taking off double track, increasing infrastructure, increasing our roads. Uh, making life good. Mm. You are complaining that government is borrowing too much. So where do you expect us to get all the money to do all these things? Plug the loopholes. Which loopholes do you know of mm. that can, we can plug? That will solve all our problems that we don't need to increase tax, mm. we don't need to pay anything and just go free of charge. Widen the me. tax net. Widen the tax net. Mm. That is being done. How? The tax net, if you look at the the, 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 the data. Mm. Obviously, where the number of people that have been captured in the tax bracket today has increased. Mm. That is a fact. It is not enough because our developmental needs are higher than uh, 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 what we generate as a people. Okay. And so naturally, you would have to raise money from somewhere. Mm. And so if you are expecting <coughs> this same government, okay, that gave you free water, free electricity, gave hot meals to other people during COVID. You are having a uh, 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 right now, mm. as you and I are speaking, uh, Uganda is back in lockdown. We have the same population as Uganda. Let mm. me give you an example. Well, was the Uganda, water and electricity free? I, no, I want clarity. Hold on, hold on, please. Uganda. No, no, I, I want you to finish that mm -hmm. before you go to Uganda, the population yes. analysis. Is the water and electricity free? Because Kojo Ponkroma told us that we are paying for it. <laughs> so it is not free. Hold on, hold I, I, I will not accept the free tag unless you explain to me why it has to be free. Are you telling me that during that period, mm. uh, those within the brackets that were stated didn't get the 50% free mm. uh, uh, reduction, others didn't get uh, not paying altogether, uh, that didn't happen for water? What he's saying is that mm. after coming out of that, and I started my, my submission with a preamble, the mm. president said <coughs> that we knew how, we know how to get an economy back. But what we don't know is how to bring life back. So call it credited so, water and electricity because I'm paying credited. for it. It's not credited. In that fact, time. It's water and electricity. <laughs> allow, allow him. Allow hold him. on. Hold on. At that period, mm. during that time when you were actually enjoying it, it was okay, right? At that, at that rate, okay? Can, can, can let, I ask... Let, can, me draw, can, let me draw your attention. Can back. I ask you a, Look, a simple question? Draw, no, so on, so this... Johnny, so Johnny, this Johnny, Johnny, no, no, relax. relax. Johnny. Johnny. Richard, relax. Re rela re Richard, mm -hmm. relax for me, please. Mm -hmm. please. So this is your fine spectacles. You go into a shop of your choice, and then you take it. You choose it. You like it. Mm -hmm. And then they say, oh, take it and go. Because at this point, you don't have the money to pay, and we are all in difficult situations. Then you take the space and go. Then six months afterwards, the people start knocking on your door and say, oh, we have a payment plan for you, for the spectacle that you took and you, are enjoy you enjoyed at the time that, when that it was free. That is very, very bad. Because if I, if I go and buy no, something no, on credit, no, no, if I bought something no, on credit no, and no, I'm paying for it, no, it doesn't no, make it free, no, does no, it? No, no. Please, Johnny, stop misinforming your viewers. The electricity and water that you consumed in 2020 is gone. So you cannot equate it with my uh, glasses. Are we paying for it? I'm saying that. Are we paying for oh, it? Oh, hold on. I'm saying that the mm. electricity and mm. water that you consumed mm -hmm. during that period, which you paid either 50% for or 0% uh, 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 zero zero for. for. Lifeline, yeah. I'm saying that that consumption you did is gone. Are we paying so you, for that? Hold on. Mm. You have spent it. Haven't you? Mm. 2020 is gone with that expenditure. Mm. If you are viewing TV, if you are using it to charge your phone, you have benefited from it, it's gone. Today you are using a different, or today is a different day, you are using different, uh, 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 you are in a different circumstance, mm. 
the energy that you are uh, using today is not the same energy you used today. Are we paying for what so we used in the past? The are we paying for what we what used in the past? What are you paying for the past? Because you Kojo Apokuma was hold clear. On, he hold says on, that. Hold on, hold mm. on. You have had an increase in the price of the uh, commodity. Has there been an increase? Uh, no. Has there been an increase? No, hold on. When did PRC increase tariffs? No, I'm. We we'll have to get there at a point somehow. But PRC has not well, increased I'm tariffs now. I'm saying that we we'll have to get there. So you should actually even question yourself. Where is that uh, uh, argument of uh, having uh, 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 the uh, uh, payment plan for for this? So I, I, it is not. So what is, it so, is what is your argument so, 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 there? It's not me. It's argument? not. It's not me who is saying it. I interviewed Ochema Boaji here, Dr. Ochema Boaji, yes. who is government spokesperson on finance. Yes. And he says that you may think that government is giving you something for free, yes. but there's actually no free lunch anywhere, mm -hmm. and that you either pay through pay as you earn or more income tax. Yes, and the now Kojo Abon Kuma comes up to say that, uh -huh. well, we enjoyed this back then, but now we have, have to pay for it. Now, asking you, I'm just giving you the preamble. If, the preamble if, if I enjoy that. something for free on Monday uh -huh. and on Tuesday I'm having to pay small, small for it, does it make what I enjoyed on Monday what free? Saying, what I'm telling you is that there mm. was a preamble the president stood on and told you this that what we do not know mm. is how to bring life back, but the economy will bring it back. Okay. Now, why didn't you ask how we we're going to bring the economy back? How we're we going to do the that? The manager of the economy told me he knew how to do it. Yes, and so that I is exactly him. what he's doing right now. So I'm paying Will for you it. Rather, Am I not? No, so you rather have it for free and the economy will collapse. So don't call it free then. <laughs> do you get the point that when you enjoyed it, it was for free? And if you are paying for it today, you are, you are, you are paying for it. <laughs> Or did you expect that you continue to have it for free? I hear you. The point is that mm. during that period, mm -hmm. all government workers that were not going to work were being paid. Right. It's only Ghana that I know of that everybody that was on government payroll was sitting at home and was getting their full salary. Tell me anywhere else you know. How do you expect that to be? Uh, Other countries were giving money. I know people in the U.S. who got four thousand dollars, <laughs> five thousand dollars. There are Ghanaians who work there. You who know even what? Were at home. Who, mm. Yes, who work there and they have no uh, employment. Tell me that that person was on government payroll mm. and the government added $4,000, $5,000 to them. I also have a family there. Don't tell me what you don't mm. know. So, I'm saying so people that did not get money? You were, if you were not employed, okay. you had certain benefits brought to you. That's right. And I'm saying that here, if you were not employed, you had food, hot meals, and all those things. You had free electricity, you had free water. I used to and call it benefits free. Came back. Yes. Okay. It was. No, no, all right. It's, it's Unless okay. Unless you do it's, not it's, understand it's, it's, the my... fact that as at the time that you are in trouble, mm. you are giving those benefits to free yourself out of it. Okay. So now that your economy and yourself is back to work and you are mm. running, we expect you to contribute I, I, a bit. I, I think that uh, maybe, we, maybe we need to and, get the definition see, you of free. My you took my attention away oh. from the example I was going to give. Uganda. You. Uganda. Mm. And that gives you an example of how good leadership gets you out of this. Mm. Ghana has the same population size and everything with Uganda. Today, they have gone back to a lockdown. And the w, uh, WHO is predicting that they are heading for the uh, uh, don't Dead wave, yeah. Yes. How many people have been vaccinated in Uganda? 6,000. Mm. Ghana. The first dose that came in was 600,000. We have had it rolling out. Look at the current figures. If we are all going to get two shots, by the time using 70% of 30%, even if 20 million Ghanaians were to get a, a, a free, a two free shots, mm. do you know the cost of it? Your point? It comes at a cost, but you are getting it for free. <laughs> Somehow it has to be paid for. It's a facility. It's, it's a facility. Mm. Really? All of, all, all of what Ghana is getting so, is free. So far what you have got is not the COVAX on. facility. Did did you, we are did, getting Spain for Did you from, pay yeah, any money? Aren't you buying some for Spain, uh, Spain did you, from did you, China? Did, you hello, pay, hello, did Ghana pay hello, any hello, money? Hello, we are getting some from uh, 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 Sp uh, Sputnik, mm. uh, China. Mm. Aren't you buying? Have government you, is paying for others because in the end... Richard, the, the, hold on. Has government bought any vaccine with money that you know of? 
that you can confirm. Is buying. Yes. Has government bought the, is the spent money? Is the one that comes for free? Okay. The extra that you are getting to supplement the covers because my you covers is coming from India. Have you bought India it? India has stopped producing for us or for us. Has government bought I'm any vaccine? I'm saying that covers has finished. Okay. Covers as it is now. Right. They are even now trying to rope in China okay. to get covers mm. to roll out for no, the rest no, of us. What is happening is that <laughs> your <laughs> government is having to source the rest of it from elsewhere. They pay for it. But have you paid any money as we speak I'm for any COVID vaccine? I'm saying that government is paying for the extra they are sourcing from other sources. How much? Yes. How much? No, I cannot put figures to you immediately and tell okay. you that we have paid 5,000 uh, 5, or 5 million okay. uh, dollars. But I'm telling you that you have a smart president, a smart government. They are getting the product from elsewhere when other governments cannot. Okay, thank you. Sami, uh, uh, Sami, Sami, I, I appreciate it. I give you two minutes, I beg you. Uh, I can even uh, only two add minutes. I can to the topic you want us to treat. <laughs> no, no. I do it. No, so no. What topic we, you want we us will to move discuss? on. Yeah, uh, two minutes. This, this okay. is just uh, your greetings the, the, the have point taken I want to make us. Is that we forever. are all entitled to our opinions, but we are not entitled to our own set of facts. So when we are speaking to viewers, let's be factual. Richard knows very well that the reason why the price of fuel has gone up in the United States of America mm. is because of the Russian hackers shutting down the US fuel supply system. It's got nothing to do with the imposition of taxes. Mm. The reason why the price of fuel has gone up in Ghana is not because of any hacker shutting down our fuel supply system. It's simply because your insensitive government has chosen to impose taxes mm -hmm. on the prices of fuel. And not just that, other taxes on Ghanaians, mm -hmm. which is what is creating the hardships that we are all complaining about. So mm -hmm. let's admit that. Don't blame this on what is happening in the United States of America. The two cannot be compared, and that is a fact. Secondly, um, you see, the, mere, the, the fact that we have gone through an economic crisis as a result of COVID mm -hmm. is the more reason why governments should be providing relief mm -hmm. to the suffering masses and not imposing taxes. Where does government like get you the said, money from? Like you said, in the United... Come on. He, talk, he spoke about, I'm coming, I will deal with that. He spoke about, oh, we did free water, we did free this. We, for, for how many weeks? Three weeks of lockdown. But that's something. Hold on, where? Free water, in in, free in, in free Kumase, free in Accra. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, hold on, hold on. It went on. The, it was no, the no, food. No, it was the, the food. talking about that. He, free food. And first of, uh, Richard, allow him, allow him, allow him. First of all, I'm talking about the hot meals. Allow him. Yeah, which was for three weeks. So free food was in Kumase, hold on. Free food was in Kumase was in Accra, was in Tema and Kaswa yes. for three weeks. Yes. Yes. Those were the places free water under was partial about lockdown. For, was for free water went on. Three, I mean, four, it went on. In fact, in fact, as you speak now, those years. below the lifeline are still hold enjoying. On. So hold on. Yeah. Listen to me. You yourself. Nurses, nurses. The fifth oh, oh, Allah, 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 Richard, I think it's only fair that you allow You yourself, you've exposed them that that was not free at all. Because no, I'm asking questions. I'm not After they anybody. won, mm. uh, you know, rightly or wrongly, mm. the 2020 elections, the Minister for Information came to us and told us that you now have to pay for what we told you we were giving you for free. So how then do you call that free? Secondly, they, they are trying to create an impression as if they did Ghanaians a favor by giving the places which suffered from the lockdown, people in those places, hot meals and free days and all that. The truth of the matter is that because of COVID, government got a lot of monies mm. from external sources, like the one billion US dollars the IMF gave us, mm. like the 100 million uh, dollars grant from free? the World Bank, like the 200 million dollars from free? the stabilization we're, we're fund, which was accumulated by the ex war Muhammad okay. regime. We need all to move these on. things mm -hmm. are monies Belonging to the state that you spent on these, you know, programs. Okay. We, so we need to move on. Thank that. you. Thank don't you very much. Don't come and say that. Uh, okay. Okay. It, was, it was on this program. And, and, and for the records, uh, uh, you know, uh, for the records. Oh, I think by any time. Rich, Rich you're not being fair to me. You're not being fair to me. I think you're heckling too much. I think you're heckling too much. Now, let me also say that it is very surprising that today Richard will sit here and ask, oh, where do you expect us to get money from if we don't tax the people? Were you not the same people? Who told Ghanaians that taxation is a lazy approach to development? Was it not Dr. Bawumia who sat in the studios of Joy FM in 2016 when he wanted power and told us that Ghanaians have been overburdened with taxes by the Maham administration? 
and that if they are given the opportunity, mm. they will rather develop Ghana through tax incentives. There was no COVID then. Oh, but they said they, they didn't. Allow but there was doom so mm. that affected the economy. Will I get a chance? No, we are the, not the, the, price, each other the so prices, not? the prices of commodities like mm. cocoa, oil, mm. had come down on the international market. It had affected government government's revenue pro projections. Yes. You understand? And yet, in fact, for that year, the, 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 the oil and gas sector grew in the negatives. Negative 18%. Mm. And yet, they said that it was insensitive for the Mahama administration to have introduced taxes. Your point? That is where mm. they branded taxes like ESLA as mm. nuisance taxes and promised to scrap saying. Okay. You so you, that now yeah. that you have power, mm -hmm. cannot okay. turn around and say that taxation is the means by which governments must raise revenue. Why? What haven't you collected in taxes already in the last four and a half years? You have borrowed than any government in the history of this okay. country. Why, why Thank you. You've had use, so much use, resources, use. Me, yet you cannot show you. a single yes, secondary yes, school, a, a, a single Thank hospital you. that you have Thank built you for the of this Thank you very much. Please country. mute their microphones for me. Is Enough of the greetings. Oh, oh, we have oh, greeted oh, ourselves oh, for more than 30 what minutes. It's okay. What have you done? With the resources that have accrued to you okay. in the last four and a half okay. years. Thank you. Justify, Thank you very much. Please put your microphones off. We have greeted yeah. ourselves for 40, yeah, 40 minutes. No, no, you have people both yeah, greeted us. Equal time for both of you. Now, I am on the global, so I'm on the global <laughs> petrolprices.com uh, yeah. website. Yeah. It says UL fuel prices, electricity prices, natural gas prices. The table below shows the most recent prices per liter of octane 95 gasoline, regular diesel, and other fuels. Mm -hmm. These are retail pump level mm. prices, including all taxes and fees. Mm. The information is updated weekly. So this is for this week. I ended yeah. Fuel prices per liter. Mm. Date, USD, USD. It says gasoline prices, 31.05, that's 2021. That's uh, the, in USD. Okay, so by 31st of May, sorry about that. 31st of May, 2021, gasoline prices is 0 0.894 US dollars. The price Diesel prices, 30, 31st of May 2021, 0.841. Uh -huh. And then ethanol prices, that's 31st of, as of 31st of uh, May 2021, 0.67. That's what it is. In so, today, Richard, I, oh, that, wait, wait. Richard, so, oh, Jesus God. Slow down. Mm -hmm. So, what you, t what you said about what, four, four dollars? Cannot be entirely no, correct. To be fair to right. him, he was talking about the price per gallon. Okay. To to okay. So no this liter. is a this is a liter. But the so if you aggregate shows, if you aggregate if you aggregate zero point eight four one times four, you will still not get four dollars. You will still not get that. So huh? that was is it for is it for you get in a in a in a, in a liter a gallon? Four point five. Four point five. Uh huh. Okay. So let's do and the math. And you are telling me this is a universal price. Let's do the math. Listen, my hold on. Mm. Uh, CNN, I think uh, that would have been Wednesday or Thursday of last week. Mm -hmm. This gentleman in Texas pulls up with his uh, Chevy mm -hmm. at the gasoline station, and it costs him four dollars fifty a, a gallon. Okay, and that is what is there. Okay, so, so I, when you I, tell I, I me that, that and I'm, I'm giving you a source okay. as, as well. So $4.5? So yes. Okay. A gallon. A gallon. So okay. I have and done, I have was, done. And it I, was, he, was, he was crying out loud. Okay. That he was angry? This, yes. Okay. So I've done the maths. 0 0.841 times 4.5 gives us $3.784. Five. This, is, this, no, is the, this is the this is the universal Richard, price. Richard, Richard, okay. This let's is even the take universal price. Mm. Richard, let's even take you to this. And I said 31st. I'm talking of last week. Johnny, mm. what you've read is mm. the accurate fact. But let's even, for purposes of argument, mm. accept the figures Richard is urging on us. Four point five dollars per mm. gallon. Multiply that by four point five. Uh, I mean, uh, multiply that by five point eight. Mm. Convert it into cities. You get twenty six point one Ghana cities in mm. Ghana. A gallon is going for 27.22. What that tells you is that and the they're, price they're, per gallon, you the said price per what, liter the US of petrol and diesel in Ghana today is more expensive than the price of diesel Thank and you. petrol in the United Thank States. Thank you. So I'm so, no, yes. The difference, the reason is Thank because you. of our ah, imposition of taxes. I'm, I'm telling on you that in the US, yeah. okay, mm. 26.1 gallon yes. cities, if and we 20, go by the 4.5 dollars. So what is the difference? 
And then you, U.S. produces, yes, yes, yes. produces uh, uh, crude oil. They process crude oil, mm. and then the difference between you and them is about ten cents. And you are telling me that uh, ours is crazy. Cents. Okay, thank you. No, ten cents. Thank you very much, uh, like, Brenda. Okay. Please play the video again. On thank the you. Same, on, the same, on the same, on the same, on the same. Brenda, let's play. On play. the same program. Mm. Yeah. This is the chamfa, which crushes the stones. We are aware we don't have to pollute the water bodies with our chemicals. In the end, one thing remains clear, that the fight against illegal mining is far from over. If you take Atiwa, we have about you know, 757 different plants, not, not plants, but trees, vascular plants. Yeah, so the place is so rich when it comes to tree species. And um, some of these um, species are black species. What I mean is that they are endangered worldwide. They are finishing. All right, so uh, good morning to you, Dr. Kenna Frimpon and uh, of the KNUSD, Manfredo. So um, let's begin this conversation with you. Um, so this is what Alfred found in the Atiwa Forest, Ketsi uh, Assignments Program, or if you like, um, platform. People are still mining in the Atiwa Forest. And you heard them say that the big people are the ones who sent them in there. In the meantime, we're preparing to plant more trees, five million of them, in three days. How do we put the two together? That we are cutting down trees to mine, and we are going to plant trees. What are we doing? You see, this is what happens when you have a group of people who have little regard for truth and principle in the realm or in office. Huh. This is what happens. You see, because this whole talk about we are fighting Galamse, mm -hmm. there is a new fight against Galamse, mm -hmm. it's not genuine. And for that matter, will suffer the same fate. Mm -hmm. The first fight that was launched by President Ekufuadu against the Galamse menace um, in 2017 suffered. Mm -hmm. The reason why that fight did not succeed had to do with a lack of candor, lack of sincerity, mm -hmm. lack of a genuine political will mm -hmm. on the part of the president, his appointees, and his party apparatchiks. Unfortunately, that is the same problem we are seeing now. They've told the whole country that they have launched Operation Halt Number Two, mm, phase two, to stop mm. all forms of mining in forest reserves and water bodies. Ordinary Guineans have been arrested; some have been um, 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 assaulted. Mm. Mining equipment have been bent for the cameras. But some of us have maintained that until this government actually traces the real campings mm. behind this illegal mining menace, arrest them, mm. prosecute them, and jail them as prescribed under our minerals and mining laws, mm. the latest amendment of which was assented to by President Ekufuado in 2019, mm. we are going nowhere in this illegal How mining How do they find menace. them? If they don't arrest the small For example, officers. when your colleague interviewed mm. the people he saw at that site, right. he said that we are working, the people there said mm. that they were working for their director. Right. You understand? Because the people you see at those mining sites are not the owners of the concession. They can't afford an excavator. Mm. So the real camping six in Accra or wherever he may be, pumps money into the business. These casual workers work and then they come and give him the money. So if you just arrest them, mm -hmm. these casual workers who don't own the concession, who didn't, they don't own the investment, you burn the excavator. Without actually using the excavator as an important exhibit or evidence to trace the 
real owner of that concession, of that business. Arrest him, prosecute him, and jail him. Now the law says when a person is convicted for engaging in illegal mining, he can be sentenced to 15, 15 years, a minimum years, of 15 right. years right. in prison and a maximum of 25 years, that, that which is very enough. punitive mm. and deterrent. Mm. Yet, President Ekufuado has chosen the lawless path. But President Ekufuado doesn't commit people to crime. Ah, he doesn't, but is he not he the one? Prosecute is crime. he not the one who has come out boldly to defend the burning of excavators, the destruction of evidence? Mm. Is he not the one who has come out boldly to justify the lawless manner in which his government is fighting illegal mining? Something which has been condemned by civil society and all progressive minds in this country. So we have said that the surest way to winning the fight against illegal mining mm. is by approaching that fight with conduct and genuine political will. And you don't see that. And by arresting. Mm prosecuting and jailing the corporates, particularly the real campaigns. Look at the... What look, they are doing... Look, look at the minister for lands, for example. I mean, he speaks and you see the passion with which... Is it about speaking? speaking? Is it not the same minister for lands and natural resources? Who I like is a good friend. Who tried to gag the Asante Hinotunfo from naming and shaming those engaged in illegal mining. How can you trust such a man? Listen, these are... In 2017, they did the same things they, did, they are doing today burning excavators, dealing with, you know, the symptoms of the problem, dealing with the casual workers, burning excavators and all that. At the end of the day, they betrayed all of us. How do we support government? On, How they, do we support government to achieve You support them, first of all, by telling them the truth. Halt. You support them by, first of all, telling them the truth in the face, naming and shaming, like I'm doing. What did we see back then? A presidential staffer who doubled as a secretary to the Interministerial Committee Against Illegal Mining, Charles Bissu. Together with MPP apparatchiks like Andy Usu, the personal assistant of Chairman to me, were caught by Anas Arimiyaw Anas on video taking bribes and facilitating Galamsey by foreigners. Till date, has the president dealt with any of them? Charles B.C. was not even removed as a presidential staffer. The missing, the 500 missing excavators, what has happened to it? A police report was lodged by no less a person than the then Minister for Environment and Science, Professor Frimpong Watson, against the MPP Central Regional Vice Chairman Ekuawusi as the one who stole the excavators. What has happened to the matter? The police has abandoned the case. Ekuawusi's auctioneer license has been restored to him. So, so the go to the police. Have not been found. So put pressure on the police to prosecute. They, are, they have the power to prosecute. Master, and they, are is, general. they will tell you order from above. Has the president ever commented mm. on that missing excavator scandal? Has the president cracked the whip on any of his government appointees who have been caught to be engaging in illegal mining? President How on can everything. you win the fight mm. against illegal mining? Mm. When you shield and protect your own officials and party faithfuls who are caught to be engaging in illegal mining. You are not so suggesting that the president you, is complicit, are you? Ah, the, because the, the extent, president doesn't prosecute he, crime. No, he takes, no. The one who prosecutes crime is his mm. lawyer. That's the Attorney General and Minister That's for right. Justice. He works at his behest. He has the power to hire and fire him. You understand? Mm. So if he is not doing the work, the president is the one who takes ultimate responsibility. After all, it was the president who said he was putting his presidency on the line okay. for this fight. You, I it asked is, you, I asked you a is, question. I am not surprised. I, I, I asked you, I asked you a Johnny, question. Johnny, Johnny, How coming. do we support government? You say one, by telling them the truth. I'm sure you have told them your truth. And by making recommendations. At okay. the end of the day, the back stops with the president. Okay. He is the one to choose whether he is going to approach this fight with sincerity mm. and with the needed genuine political will, mm. arrest and punish those engaging in it, mm. no matter or regardless of their political or social backgrounds. Mm. If NDC people are caught, deal with them. If MPP people are the ones polluting our water bodies, deal with them. We cannot allow a few greedy politicians, a few greedy individuals mm. in this country, to destroy our water bodies, our forest reserves, our mm. environment, mm. in pursuit of money. Okay, thank you. So, let, let, so, let me give the so, remainder so, time so to, to reach it. So mm. in conclusion, the point mm. I'm making here is that we in the NDC are not surprised that illegal miners are still ongoing in the Atiwa forest, a place where President Kufuado himself is from. And the reason why that is so is because of two reasons, the lack of political will to end Galamsey on the part of President Kufuado, that lack of sincerity, which caused the failure of the first fight mm. is the same thing playing out. And secondly, because 
the approach the president has adopted to the fight against illegal mining mm. is not punitive and deterrent enough. The burning of excavators is not punitive and deterrent enough. What okay. is punitive and deterrent enough is what we have recommended. Mm. Arrest the people, trace the real kingpins, prosecute them, jail them for a period of minimum 15 years, maximum 25 years, and you will stop this Thank illegal you. mining. Richard, nonsense. so we are preparing to plant 5 million trees, and I'll say good morning to my good friend, and I'll say our Dakwa, who had sat here with me in 2018, sometime again in 2019, and spoken about the National Tree Planting Day in, in July. Well, Abu Jinnapur says we're doing it in June. That's in three days. But an environmentalist I spoke with yesterday said, look, how do we propose to plant trees to save the earth, and yet we have people still doing what we saw in the video going on? It's like we're breaking it, fixing it, breaking it, fixing it. Can we ever achieve anything by doing this uh, makwe, as you like to call it. Thank you very much, uh, Johnny. Uh, that video is a vindication of the steps mm -hmm. taken by the president, the minister of lands and forestry, and the defense ministry. Mm -hmm. Even with the burning, mm -hmm. you have gone to the Tua forest and found people defying all that. Mm -hmm. When they did the fourth phase, mm -hmm. even after putting out a communique that uh, there will be a, 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 some rounds on Ancobra, mm -hmm. blah, 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 mm -hmm. blah, blah, blah. The thinking is that the people who have scorned, mm -hmm. they went, they got people, they bent. That tells you how criminally minded the people are. And they do not care which government is in place. Now, about the tree planting, and for mm. me, let's bring attention to it. Mm. And it's very important. We need to save our earth. Okay. There is a target of, I think, 8 billion trees to be planted worldwide. Mm. And this is part of that effort. The ministry, in just a day, mm -hmm. has put in place a system, a structure, mm. that would allow 5 million trees to be planted. Mm. I would wish that we able to probably set up some system, maybe a week mm -hmm. in a, every year. It becomes a government policy. Mm -hmm. If you can do five million trees in a day, mm -hmm. in a, a, a week, seven days, that would have been about some 35 uh, million trees. If we were doing that- Seven every, years, you mean? No, seven oh. days. Okay. If we're doing five million trees a day mm -hmm. by seven, okay, that will be 35 million trees. That's right. And I'm saying that it should become probably a government policy. It's my suggestion that we we'll reserve a week in a year mm. that we do that. It's probably send as many people out there okay. to plant a tree or two as a way of reclaiming the earth. Okay. It is an environmental disaster right. that we all have to so, attend so to. So then in, in, now, try, in trying to do that, I, they, I would like to respond yeah, to his galaxy yes. thing, but because you brought the focus on this, yes. in trying to do that, the youth in afforestation, yes. I mean, not a single day passes without they saying, we have not been paid. We have not been paid. And you know, Sir John was very passionate about the youth in afforestation, using yes. them to plant a lot of trees. Yes. Now they are complaining that they, have, they are not being paid. We are three days away from a national tree planting exercise. We will need their commitment and expertise yeah. because you can't just go around planting. Somebody must be there to nurture it. And yeah. that's why we put them there. How do we solve the problem of not having them saying, we have not been paid, so we are not going to support this. We are not even coming to work. As part of that, I, I was in Kumasi uh, uh, over the weekend. And as part of it, I know the uh, EPA mm. uh, has also, because I think Saturday was World Environment Day. That's right. And they were supposed to plant trees. Mm -hmm. they, they, are, they were celebrating the day at uh, Drabe. Mm -hmm. uh, as part of it, the EPA, the Forestry Commission and all the others are also uh, doing their part. Mm -hmm. And so in the end, it will be more than the 5 million mm -hmm. trees. But you brought a point. Sir so John was very passionate about it. What I know was that the, the numbers that uh, 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 the well, finance well, ministry yeah. actually ratified mm. to be employed were less than uh, Sir John Tukon. Okay. Yes, like you said, because of his passion. Mm. But, and he had a target in mind, but you are operating within a budget. Mm -hmm. So it brought a huge uh, 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 burden 
to uh, the, 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 the budget. Mm -hmm. These are some of the things. Mm -hmm. We have a lot of things as a people that we need to achieve in a very short time. Right. But we have limited resources to do it. Mm -hmm. So Sir John uses his own ingenious ways to bring about this 60 or 65,000 people on board. When they required less, uh, uh, the, the, the ratification was just for about 10,000. Mm. How do you take care of the, those things? I'm aware that the ministry, I think they put some system in place mm. that uh, something had to go around for everybody, not what they originally budgeted for right. to take care of this. Mm. But like we are saying, these are the reasons why we all will probably have to pinch ourselves a bit and pay more. But they are disgruntled. To get, <laughs> that's yes. what, that, see, they are disgruntled. That that's, my, that's my concern. Because I have had occasion to plant uh, some trees in Tamale yes. with uh, Nanaya Ose yes. uh, We planted with the Dachema Palace yes. up there. It takes a lot of time to even nurture the, the seedlings, seedlings yes. to plant it. To care for, for, it, it, for to, it to, to grow. grow. Not, yes. But in two weeks, it will die. Yes. yes. Now, the guys in youth and afforestation are the ones who have been trained, who know how to, to do manage that. it. For six months yes. now, and they have not been paid. Napco so, beneficiaries so, for six months now, they've not been so, paid. So, 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 so allow, him, allow him to wrap up. So, I just so, wanted to so, recommend so, to you how so, we can pay No, please. Okay. No, I don't need that. The point is that coming to the you don't want to you don't want to pay them coming to the galamse bit obviously no no let's talk about the the payments the guys the guys are hungry he said a lot of things he wasn't interested in this on no 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 because you are raising it I'm happy your people are rushing to relax relax go go bring the sound down a bit no I'm asking you I'm asking you how they will be paid because. Every single day, they send messages to us. Mm -hmm. For more than six months, they have not been paid. Yes. And I'm thinking how they are keeping body and soul together, how they are going to even willingly support the tree planting exercise. It's a no, crucial I, point. I, 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 I expect the, 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 uh, the, the current boss of mm. the forest... Al Alotin, John Alotin. Yes. Mm. To, uh, he's a, he's a, it's a, 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 I think he has a very good rapport with the Minister of... Finance. I've mm. raised the issue about the number about about the numbers, mm. and I am aware some figures had to come down to take care of all of this. Right. But obviously, it's like they, we are overstretched, so they have to go and make a good case. Mm. And I'm right. sure I they'll be listening. Okay, but the Galante, say you want to report yes. to Galante. Okay. He said your, your yes. king pings are yes. there. Yes, you see. So now we are even confused exactly what the NDC wants. Number one. If it comes to the issue of burning of excavators, mm. the precedent was set by you. And we learned we, we learned it from then you, you the and we are people. using it as a deterrent to deter the people. You have a problem with it, but that's you why they were voted yeah, out. You sit, you sit, no, Sammy, you wait. But 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 you said the NDC, you, on, you said the NDC is on, incompetent. Hold on, hold on, How do you use the standard of the incompetent is it, is to, to it, manage a competent uh, government? The other aspect of it is that yes, oh, for now it has. It people, never, people, but people are still mining. Yes, and I'm saying that. Is he, is he no, 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 hold on, hold on. There's another face. I'm saying very I'm allow, saying allow, allow Richard, oh, uh, uh, Sammy, allow Richard. Let there is another face. Uh, I have sat down with the defense minister. Okay. There is another face. There's a sweeping face. All these people, they think they might be getting away with it. They will come back at them. But if he announces it at the press conference oh, no, ahead before on. they move in. And I'm saying that, yes, but even after the announcement, the people are still there. And it, it, it just reinforces the need to keep doing this. Sami 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 says Sami Sami sits here Sami sits here and I'll says that there are campaigns and blah 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 mm. and they, we should take a, 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 a identify go, go them. to them and punish Why them Why not so that when we have identified people and we are dealing with them yes. then uh, we are burning their machines. Then people come and then they tell and you. Them. Use that, the machine ah, as evidence to prosecute ah, and jail ah, But who says that the prosecution the, aspect? If you burn the machine, no. they will it will happen. The prosecution will happen. Who tells you the prosecution is not part of it? No, the prosecution. You destroy the evidence. Hold on. Hold on. You hold on. You destroy the evidence. Which evidence has been destroyed? The excavator. The excavator is standing on the land. What you is the evidence that has been burned? So where where is that evidence? No, the burning doesn't mean that. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. No, Richard, let me just sign up. Johnny, Johnny, Johnny. You not you not be you not be you not be fair. Look, so, so the mean, point is that, mm, oh, finally. number one, mm. the burning is taking place. It will continue to take place. Whoever you are associated with that you are not happy about that we are burning the excavators, let them know. We will continue to burn. Go to the BNI. Go to National Security. 
all but, these but, places but, there are investigations but, but Richard, going on on all the names okay, okay so Richard, 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 Richard no, if I burn no. if I burn an excavator yes and the excavator has a chassis number yes. and I don't trace the chassis number to find out who imported it or who owns it or who hired it what have I gained? <laughs> what have you gained? I'm saying that there are dockers being prepared on all these things. Oh, okay. Yes. <laughs> so we it will come. Not, yes. Okay. No, 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 you haven't heard okay. it. The, the last, the last oh, one. Oh, oh, the but last, how many last oh, ones? Yes. Yes. No, no, no. no, 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 no Johnny, the point I want to make. Alas, alas, alas. You have had too many last ones. No, Sammy went on and on and on and on. As a young man, I am very worried about the fact that the youth and the station guys and the local guys have not been paid. And Johnny, this is what I have to say. Allow him to have the last. Okay. You, have no, no, you have the last one. You have the last because you have, the last you have the big brother. You have the last If one. President mm. Akufuado yeah. will live within his means, mm. lead by example, okay. cut his coat according to his size, mm. stop traveling in luxurious rented private what, what, jets what at fifteen thousand pounds per hour. Okay, we will get money. To what, pay what, 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 what these okay. poor okay. Thank you. youth in our I, I thought you were going to. I thought you were finally, going to. And finally, on the no, burning no, of excavators, no, finally. No, Johnny, you're not, you're not being fair. Richard, the mistake you you you're making is you this. You Thank you. The Galamse business is very lucrative. Thank you very much. Gentlemen. So if you very arrest perfect. somebody engaging in Galamse mm. and all you do to him is to burn his excavator, the person will sing hallelujah and praise the Thank you very much. Grateful for your time this morning. Sami JP is the National Communication Officer of the NDC, that's the biggest opposition party in the, in the country. And also, Mr. Richard Nyama is a member of the NPP's National Communication Team. He's a special aide to Chairman Freddie Blay. Thank you, gentlemen, for coming. They've not seen themselves in, in uh, four years. So, they, they, they are here. Happy birthday to Owusu Warai, Concept Warai. Happy